So, okay. So here, today we're gonna talk about India's COVID crisis, which is kind of recent, I guess. And I think that, um, I guess it's also because of mm. their, so I think it, it now it's a time when you can see like every country, a lot of different countries are getting COVID, mm. but how each country handles it. Mm. Like, I think it's just really crazy. In the US, I just right. saw an article talking about how Costco has the vaccines and then, um mm. they're they're giving it out for free or then like in the u.s people are not getting the vaccine and then they're trying to give people incentive to get the vaccine i just think it's like mm. really crazy it's like so different from like taiwan mm. and then compare it to like india where people are just dying and then no one's like they don't have the resources there's doctors who are dying because they're not mm. they're unprotected and it's just like you can see when like where the medical system or how mm. it is in each of mm. these different countries is so like some are very shocking and some are just like you feel very lucky to I feel very lucky that I'm in Taiwan like I don't even know if I would feel comfortable going to the states even though a lot of people mm. are getting vaccinated um, but a lot wow. of people they just mm. don't care mm. right mm-hmm yeah, so I think it's also like how the government handles it and then the whole mentality of it. What do you think about this? Like, what do you think about like, I, I'm sure like you probably are updated about the different news. I, I, I don't know why, why there are some buddy seen uh, in, uh, in, in urine. Okay. In urine, I, I'm you not sure. Him? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah because <laughs> that's all I, I didn't. Uh, hear very clearly what you said. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, let me tell. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm just saying that about like different countries, how the medical system is is very different because of the resources. Like in India, it's a lack of resource. Doctors are dying because they're unprotected. And also in the States where there's there's too many vaccines around and then they're getting expired. So they're um, giving incentives to people to just to get vaccinated. Like you can get like a free meal or something, yeah, or you yeah. can get, um, you can have a, your name into the lottery or something like that. So I'm just saying that how it's so different around the world. Where do you mm. feel safe? Like, would you mm. be going to the US to get a vac vaccine? If you didn't get a vaccine, like, what do you think mm. about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. Maybe, I don't know, <laughs> I think, um, to go to the United States and get vaccin vaccinated, I don't think it's a good idea because they're also very risky if you take an airplane and on the airplane, there are also a lot of customers and they might have COVID and they sit just uh, next to you. So, I mean, that is not very safe to travel to the US now. Mm -hmm. Although you can get vaccinated there, and but but uh, if you want the vaccine to work, it still needs about two weeks, and uh, most of vaccine you have to um, get two dose. So one dose is not enough. So I don't think it's a smart idea to travel to the U.S. and get vaccinated. So I think um, stay in Taiwan and uh, um, and uh, do what you have to do. I mean that um, uh, to prevent you uh, uh, have uh, to prevent you uh, meet a lot of people or hold some parties or uh, to gathered in. 
the public area. I, I think, and uh, to uh, wear mask and uh, wash your hands, I think do what uh, you can do is most important for Taiwanese people. Okay, yeah, I would agree. I think Taiwanese people, yeah. I'm just very shocked because even mm -hmm. for us, it's level three, it's not level four, which is everyone needs to stay home and it's under lockdown. I was quite surprised mm -hmm. that everyone was voluntarily staying at home. Like the streets yeah. were so mm -hmm. much emptier. Like you could really tell that people were just staying in and there's just not no people on the streets. Yeah. I, I was really surprised actually. Like yeah. this is so much mm. different than how it was mm. um, in the States. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a good point. And uh, it let me think about uh, last year, uh, just in the beginning of the outbreak of the COVID-19 in the world. And most of Taiwanese, they are very vigilant and uh, they care about uh, their life and uh, um, they, um, they reduce the activity uh, outdoors. Uh, but I think just uh, uh, in the beginning of this year, most of people in Taiwan, they are not very vigilant about the, the virus. For example, um, uh, in March I, and in February, I mean, I remember that there, is, is an, there was an outbreak in Taoyuan Hospital and there are still a lot of people they went to my clinic and a lot of people they went to hospital. It's totally different from last year because in February and March last year, um, the people went to hospital reduced to about one third. So I think that uh, it's proof that in this year, in the beginning, most of people, they do not very vigilant about the virus. They are just, I think most of them are very, were very tired until this uh, outbreak in May. They, I think they just wake up that virus yeah. is so close to us. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay, yeah. let's let's just go through this article here, and then mm -hmm. we can start the discussion, and then Ellen Ellen can join when she comes. Okay. Do you want to read it? Okay. Uh, many countries around the world are sending action to India. This is because of India's current COVID nineteen crisis. India is the world's second most popular country, a populous country with over 1.3 billion people. It is currently struggling to cope with its latest surge in the coronavirus pandemic. There are over 300,000 new cases every day, the largest number of daily cases over experienced by any country. India's health system can no longer cope. There are not enough beds, and hospitals are turning away people with the virus. They have also run out of oxygen. Singapore and the UK have sent much needed oxygen cylinders to India. India's government has also arranged for Amazon to deliver 100 ven ventilators. Okay, cylinders. Cylind okay. Cyl uh, cylinders. Yeah, so cylinders. Cylinders. Okay. So how do you think the world can help India in your opinion? And do you think Taiwan mm. can or should help them? What do you think about this? Yeah, I heard news that Taiwan Taiwan government also sends um Asian some oxygen machine to India and I'm not sure because I just uh, read the news maybe yeah and ventilator I, I mean and I, I know they, they they also sent ventilators to India yeah okay. so mm. so what do you think about that yeah I think it's great because um, I think in this moment that every country have to help each other 
and um, I think uh, uh, I think uh, it's best. It's uh, it's the best that some country they um, distribute the materials or things that other countries they need and uh, do not set any restriction or limitation or ask for some feedback. Uh, so for example, uh, last year, uh, Taiwan, Taiwanese government, they uh, have a lot of country with uh, masks and uh, some, uh, uh, some protect, uh, protective uh, materials to other countries. And now uh, some countries, they, they don't know that the, uh, the, the situation in Taiwan. So they also help Taiwan with the uh, vaccines. So I think it, uh, it's a good feedback and uh, it's a vicious cycle for these countries. So, yeah, so I think uh, we can help India as much as we can. Right, yeah, I think so too. It's a global community, right? Because we have helped others and now we're receiving help as well. Yeah, so it let me think about another issue of, of, about the import, import, of, import of some vaccine from, uh, like, I mean that BNT uh, vaccine from Pfizer. Uh, because the agent, the company in China, I think they interfere we to get the vaccine because they do not think we are a country. So they, uh, they, they, so they, um, so uh, I mean that they mean they think we ha in the contrast we cannot we cannot be a country or cannot be Taiwan. So I mean they say some risk. Uh, limitation or restriction to our government to get vaccine. So I think that is not good for control of the disease. Yeah, I think so too. But yeah, China's like that, right? Even now, yeah. if it's like a very serious um, health issue, they still try to suppress us. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens when the health system can no longer cope? So like yeah. in India, yeah, I think the problem in India is that the assert of um, of the patients. I mean, the for example, a hospital might can deal with one hundred patients, but now suddenly there are more than two hundred patients. So the hospital can couldn't deal with so uh, this. Uh, this tremendous amount of patients. So the um, uh, the work, the doctors and nurse and the workers in the hospitals, they they will burn out and they do not have enough materials such as oxygen and uh, ventilators to deal with all the patients. So uh, so they the 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 outcome is that some patient, they might just be uh, mild disease in the beginning, but because they do cannot get uh, effective and uh, uh, effective treatment in the beginning. So they become worse after then, and they might progress to more serious disease in the end. So I think that is the problem. Okay. And what advice would you give to Indian India's leaders? Um, yeah, I think. Um, yeah, because I think uh, now they they have to face um, this issue that a lot of patients in the India and they do not have enough um, health workers there and they do not have enough um, things, materials like ventilator to deal with the condition. So I think first uh, they have to, 
um, they have to get more uh, drugs or material to deal with the deal with the condition. They might can ask for help from other countries. For example, there are also a lot of countries they send the material that India government they need, and they can also so ask for some helpful help from other country for the health workers like doctors and nurses. And second, uh, they have to reduce the number of infect, uh, infected patients. So um, I don't they have to cut down the, in, the, the chain of infection in India. So I think uh, a longer lockdown and uh, um, or and a lockdown in a uh, whole country is uh, necessary for India government. And uh, mm -hmm. they also have to uh, let more uh, citizens to get vaccinated. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I agree with that. So what is the best way to deal with the surge in coronavirus cases? Is that like the same advice you would give for the leaders? Is yeah. That for lockdown? Yeah, because I think uh, although vaccination is very important, but that is not effective if you meet a surge because if you want the vaccine to be effective, we have to get two doses and we have to wait for two weeks. So I think uh, there's no time to wait for the for the vaccine to work. So for a government, I think the best way is to lock down and to stop the the chain of infections there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Probably that's what every all the countries are doing. So. What do you yeah. think can help in this situation? Do you think the whole world should lock down for a month? Would that help? Mm. Are there other ways? <laughs> uh, whole world to lock down. I don't think that whole world should, <laughs> should lock down because uh, there are some countries that are not very in very serious conditions. So if you ask them to act on their citizens, or residents, they might be very angry because they feel nothing. So why you ask me to lock down? And so I think uh, maybe we should to uh, find out which part or which area is um, is more serious and is a hotspot for COVID outbreak. So I think we have to lock down in that area and also the timing, I don't think how long is enough. Maybe we have to uh, to know to check the data about how many patients they um, how many new cases each day to know which which timing is the best for uh, uh, for people to return to norm to a normal life. For example, in in the UK, they originally said the the deal on I think is uh, on twenty first in June, but finally they uh, postponed the the date because there are new new cases recently about seven seven hundred new cases from uh, from four hundred cases in May, and recently there are say, say seven hundred. 7,000 new cases in the UK. So they postponed the date. So I don't really know the best timing for, uh, for release the restriction, but I think we have to check the data every day. Okay. So what about like for Taiwan, do you think that once we get lower cases that the level three is going to be lifted or do you think that it's still gonna stay put? Like the government doesn't want to just allow everyone to just go out. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, I know that um, uh, mayor of Taipei City, Ke Wenzhe, she, uh, he, uh, he said that the, con the level three lockdown will continue until uh, about say 50% or 66% resident they get vaccinated. But I don't think so. I think if the new cases reduced to about uh, lower than, maybe lower than 50 new cases each day in the country, we can lift it, the restriction. Uh, because I think uh, economics is also very important in our country. So if we, um, we maintain a very long lockdown, um, everyone's salary and uh, incomes might be influenced a lot. And also people will be tired. People, I think people, they, maybe they can comply the restriction and rules in the beginning for several months. But if you maintain the lockdown for too long, people will, will be very tired and they cannot uh, comply the rules so, so seriously like before. And that will, be, that will be some problem in that point. So I think if the condition and the num number of new cases uh, be reduced to a level, we can lift the, the restriction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's possible that waiting for all everyone to be vaccinated, because even if you're vaccinated, you still need to wait, I think it's a month or 28 days for the second vaccination. And then after the second vaccination, it's like two weeks before you're yeah. fully protected. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make sense for people, even if they're vaccinated, the first vaccine, mm -hmm. they're still not protected. So yeah. 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 Kind of. Okay, so. Oh, we finished. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I think, yeah, I didn't check, but I think that she might not have been able to make it because she did tell me that she's in a conference call. So maybe her conference oh, call was a little okay. bit longer. Um, but it's okay. We can have our own discussion. So out of these three um, items, mm. which one do you think is plays the most important part in the pandemic? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think it's, um, I mean, the uh, syringes means the vaccine, vaccine, right? Right. Yeah, I think vaccine is the most important part in in this pandemic uh, because I mean that finally we hope we can have a normal life and return to our normal life just before the pandemic. So I think the only one can bring us back to the normal life is the, is the vaccines because uh, I, it, because the uh, current current vaccination can provide a very high protective rate for severe disease. That is uh, that is that that is people. Although people might get uh, get uh, might get infected, but they will uh, they will not. Uh, they will not have to um, to go to hospital or it's just like a flu or the death rate will be very low after people they get vaccinated. So it's the only way can they allow us to have the normal life like before if uh, enough people they can get vaccinated. And the mask and the hand sanitizer uh, sanitizers. I think uh, these two materials or these two things 
are also very good for us to uh, protect ourselves. But sometimes you know that people are lazy and people are uh, easy to feel very tired to wear mask every day and wash their hand every time they they just touch something. So I think it it cannot one hundred percent to protect us for a long time. Um, for example, um, I know that wear mask is very important, but sometimes I just feel it's very difficult to breathe. So I just uh, I just take off my mask in sometimes I sometimes in the hospital. Uh, I mean that before the pandemic in, in the airport and in, in airport and March because I think the pandemic is not so serious that time. And so I think mask can mask is cannot uh, most of people cannot comply the role to wearing to wear a mask for a very long time. And, so, and for example, sometimes I forget to wash my hand because uh, some, because you mean, I mean that uh, if I see a patient and I see every patient, I have to wash my hand once. That's very, that that is very a tragedy. Yeah, 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 because in the clinic, I have to watch to see about 10 patients. That means I have to wash my hands 10 times in 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 the afternoon oh my God. yeah yeah so i don't think people can endure that for a very long time so i think finally we still need vaccine okay so vaccine is the one that seems to you is the most important one how can you argue for the hand sanitizer which i think is for you is the least important one yeah. out of all three how can you argue in mm. for it yeah and i think a lot washing hand is very important but uh now we know the covid19 is very contagious even though you wash your hand it can also in, um, transmit by the airborne air drop so so I think wear mask is more important than wash than washing your hand if you can only choose one, and also uh, if you just uh, a way that do not let your hand to touch anything. I think um, you do not need to wash your hand very frequently, but you go when you go out, everyone has to breathe. So it's, it's no. It's no doubt everyone has to wear masks in the public area. Yeah, so I mean, that is the difference. You can just put your hand in your pocket and you do not touch anything. I think that is okay if you go outdoor, but everyone has to breathe in uh, everywhere. So mask is more important than, than washing hands. Yeah. Okay. So hand sanitizer is that something that you use all the time yeah actually i bring uh a bottle of echo mm -hmm. every day yeah every day but, okay oh, but actually sometimes i forget to uh bring it to uh to hospital oh <laughs> yeah but do you yeah, wash but, your hands all the time yeah as but well? i try to i try to wash my hand every time i touch something and i touch my patients or I just go into the world, the work. Mm, but some, you know, sometimes I still forget to do, do that. Yeah, because like washing your hands ten times in the afternoon is kind of crazy. Like your hands would probably be like peeling off, or the skin yeah. would be peeling off, right? Yeah, and it's now. Uh, before the pandemic, uh, I have about 20 to 30 patients in my clinic. So if I have to wash my hands every time, means oh that I have to wash 30 times my in the afternoon. It's crazy. It's crazy. Oh my God. Yeah. But do you, you have to touch all your patients or can you like, you mm. don't really have to touch them? Can you stay away from them? 
yeah, I don't have to touch my every patient. And uh -huh. yeah, um, but I, but who knows? Because we just, they just sit in, sit in front of me and mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe they touch something on the table and I, I and I touch it again. So I might be infected. Yeah. Can so you not wear gloves? Knows, yeah. Can you, do you not wear gloves? Yeah. Yeah, we can we can wear gloves, but I think it's very weird to type on the keyboard with gloves. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah, the thing. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not used to uh, key uh, key uh, to wear glove to key something in the computer. What if, like, even if you're vaccinated, do you feel that it's safe? um that oh, you're in contact uh, with these people oh uh, no i mean that i think even though i i might get i might not have the might not have disease but not it do not mean that there are no virus on my body i mean that um it's a ecosystem in the world you know that in our body there are a lot of different viruses and the uh, bacteria and some most of them they are not affect our body they just they with us together and yeah yeah but sometimes so i i think it's quite like some people who get vaccinated they might have the virus on their body but they do not get disease because um the virus cannot uh, invade their organs or tissues but they have virus on their body. So they might also transmit the virus to other people. Yeah, so I'm just wondering, I'm just saying, thinking that Taiwan has not had an outbreak, but it kind of feels like the virus has always been here amongst us. It's just that people have not been getting, maybe not getting a fever or not getting too sick that they feel like they need to go to the hospital so that they're not tested. I'm just yeah, wondering, yeah. is that what you think as well? Like, yeah, yeah, it's I agree. actually here amongst yeah, I agree us? with your idea. Yeah, mm. I think there are a lot of, maybe we, a number of patients, they have the virus on their body, but they do not have any symptoms. So we don't know. Um, so we don't know. So there are, so we always have new cases that have no relation with the previous known case. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I think too. Yeah, and, and that's why, that's why uh, some people they think uh, maybe the COVID virus will become a virus just like flu and it will affect us, affect the world for several years, for decades. What do you think about that? Are, are you someone who, who believes in this theory or do you have your own yeah. theory? I agree. I agree with the theory. theory. And yeah. And so I think it, it is possible that um, maybe just in the future, everyone have to get vaccinated every year for, for new mutant virus. Yeah. Yeah, that's so what I, I think, think so too. I think yeah, it's going right. to be here for a while. Yeah, so I think, although some people they argue about the uh, the pharm the pharmacy industry who make the vaccine in Taiwan, but I think it's very important for us because uh, I think in the future, uh, vaccine is a very uh, tactic. I mean, tactic. Yeah, tactic um, things that if you, our country cannot make our own vaccine will be um, controlled by other country who can make vaccine. Right. But also one thing is that it's not internationally recognized, right? So if you yeah. get the vaccine to yeah. people around the world, it's gonna be like, oh, you don't have a vaccine. It's not recognized. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's the problem because you know that if you have to do a phase three study, the company have to spend a lot of money. And most of Taiwanese company, they do not have 
that kind of tremendous money. Yeah, it's the expenditure. For example, you know that in the phase two study, everyone they get vaccinated, they can have a uh, ten thousand dollars Taiwanese dollars. Oh uh, right, I heard, yeah. heard about that. Yeah, yeah. for the reward. Yeah, so we test. Uh, we test about four thousand. I think about four thousand people. So that means uh, four thousand four million, right? Four million. Not for not, not for it's forty millions, right? Million, they yeah. spend, yeah, yeah. And in phase three study, they have to uh in enroll more more people in the study, so they have to spend more money. So that's why WHO they just argue about um recently about uh if if uh if we can um. We can, if we can, um, make sure the efficacy of the vaccine without the phase three study, just to compare the level of antibody with the different kind of vaccine. To, uh, for example, to compare the level of antibody from the new vaccine to the vaccine that we know is efficacy in the real world. Yeah, but it's still not recognized. So people are more yeah. in inclined to not get that one, especially if yeah. they want to travel, right? So like for me, I would want yeah. to support the local vaccine, but if it's not internationally recognized, right, right. maybe in the future, I'm still going to have to get an international recognized vaccine. So to me, it's not worth getting it. Um, I don't know. I think um, now, if you can have any kind of vaccine that is it uh you you just uh, you just get vaccinated if you if there anyone can be available now and mm -hmm. but if you uh i mean that it's on the point of public health and because if more and more people they can they get vaccinated it means that we have more protection in our society and I think to considering go abroad or traveling is an other issue. And, and also because the vaccine, they passed the phase two study, that means that the vaccine is safe. Is safe. So it might be not efficacy in the future. We don't know, but I mean that it is safe. So you can get vaccinated and it will not cause any harm to you yeah mm -hmm. so i think uh, it, it's still a benefit for us to get vaccinated um, uh, i mean that uh, the uh, the vaccine that made in our own and also my parents they want to get vaccinated they get they want to get the the our home our country made vaccine in the future when is that going to come out is it going to come um, out in in no. uh, i think it's in, in September july or something? Yeah. oh in july yeah that's pretty and fast yeah i read a news that um uh, although it passed the phase two study and or uh, we still have to compare the antibody label to Astra astrazeneca in in july so after mm -hmm. that if the antibody that produced in uh in the test tested people is high enough compared to the astrazeneca then the vaccine can have uh, eua in the future oh okay what's what's the vaccine that you got uh, i i got uh, astrazeneca okay and did your wife have any symptoms uh, she, she was the same. She also had fever and muscle weakness, and she feel she felt very tired on the next day, just like a very serious flu. Okay, but yeah. it was only for a couple of days. Mm, yeah, just one or two days, and because the mechanism is different, you know that uh, AstraZeneca and Johnson and Johnson the vaccine they made is from 
uh, adenovirus. So you they just so they just injected another kind of virus to your body. So you will have some immune response to the virus. So it's really like a, a flu. Is that why? And, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, but the vaccine that uh, current uh, vaccine in Taiwan, uh, there another me mechanism. There, there, uh, they try to produce the antigen, a protein in the in the virus, so that. Uh, they injected the protein to your body, so the immune response will not like the will not like injected a virus to your body. So that's the oh, difference. Okay. Yeah, but but uh, the efficacy, I think it. And mm, I'm confident that the efficacy will not be bad because uh, you know another vaccine with the same mechanism in the U.S. called uh, Novax and. The efficacy just uh, reported recently about ninety percent. So I think I think the efficacy of our our vaccine mm -hmm. will not will not bad in the future. Okay, yeah, it's good to know. Yeah, I think it's really good that since you have a medical background, talking about this sort of situation would have a more of a scientific uh, mm -hmm. fact base behind that. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Um, so yeah, so this is for the lesson. And then I guess Ellie should join next class where I wish to talk about what's gonna talk about. I think I sent it in the email. So I sent okay. it on the different topics, but mm -hmm. let me know if there's some particular topics you are interested in. I think it's like I think it's the Asian hate crime. That I think I was very oh. interesting about in um, the states, right? Due to mm -hmm. the COVID situation, and I think that's an interesting topic to talk about. So I think we're going to talk mm -hmm. about that next. Okay. 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 So then I'll see you next week the same time then. Okay. Bye -bye. Okay. Thanks, Evan. See Bye. You. See you. Take care.